Hey, it's Ryan with Parts Doctor. We're gonna be looking at the Samsung refrigerator, looking at a potential issue that may cause water not to flow properly in the ice maker, which could lead to excess ice buildup in the ice maker compartment. We're gonna need a few different tools for the job. We'll leave those listed in the description below. Let's get started. First thing that we'll need to do is put the refrigerator into a force defrost mode. This will let us defrost the ice maker compartment. Depending on your model refrigerator, there's a couple different button sequences to do this. To enter into the force defrost mode on this model refrigerator, we'll hold down the energy saver and fridge buttons for approximately eight seconds. Then press the fridge button until the display says FD for force defrost. You wanna leave the refrigerator in the force defrost mode for approximately five to 10 minutes to let the ice maker and the ice maker compartment thaw out. To exit out of the force defrost mode, you'll press the same two buttons that you use to enter into the force defrost mode, and then press the button until the display goes blank and it stops beeping. At this time, you'll need to unplug or disconnect power to the refrigerator. Now we'll need to remove the ice bucket assembly. To remove the ice bucket, you'll grab the bottom, lift up and pull out. Some older models may have a button up here to depress. If your ice maker compartment has excess ice and frost built up inside, you'll wanna make sure that you thaw that out, but not by using any additional heat sources like a blow dryer heat gun. That can warp the inside plastic and ruin the refrigerator, which is not repairable. The best way to thaw the ice maker compartment is to just leave the doors open and let it thaw out on its own. Next, we'll remove the wire housing cover by removing the Phillips screw. With the Phillips screw removed, pull the cover towards you and out to remove it. Next, pull the wiring out of the side of the ice maker compartment and then depress the locking clip to remove the ice maker wiring plug. Next, you'll remove the Phillips screw on the ice duct tray. Next, using a flat blade screwdriver, we'll pry the ice duct tray over to the right and pull it down. The ice maker in this refrigerator is unique and then it has a built-in cooling coil on the bottom side of the ice maker. You'll need to make sure that this is fully thawed out, that there's no ice or frost on the coil before removing it. You want to make sure that you're very careful and you do not damage or puncture the coil on the bottom of the ice maker. If it's damaged, the whole refrigerator is ruined and cannot be repaired. To release the coil from the ice maker, you'll use a flat blade screwdriver and you'll pry down on the top of the coil. You'll want the coil pried down just enough so that the ice maker can slide out but the coil will stay in place. To remove the ice maker, depress the top locking clip, pull the ice maker forward, and then down to remove it. Now with everything removed, we can take a small inspection mirror and we can inspect the position of the ice maker waterline. Next, insert the mirror at an angle and you may need a flashlight so you can view up the tube. We wanna check the position of the waterline to make sure that it's not too far in or too far out. Take note of the position of the water line on this refrigerator. It is in the correct position. We've noticed on some newer models that there's a plastic stop that won't allow you to insert the water line too far. Again, if the water line's not in the correct position, you could end up with excess ice buildup in the ice maker compartment or the ice maker. If you end up needing to adjust the water line, we'll do that from the back side of the refrigerator. Next, remove the pieces of tape securing the hose in place. Then remove the Phillips screws and the hose retaining clips. To pull the water line out, you'll need to depress the locking collar with a flat blade screwdriver. To insert the water line in, you can just push it in. Next, reinstall the two hoses into the hose retainer clips and reinstall the two Phillips screws. Now reapply the tape. Before installing the ice maker, you'll wanna make sure that you have these six rubber pieces in place. When reinstalling the ice maker, make sure these two slots on the top of the ice maker line up with these two tabs on the top of the ice maker compartment. Next, make sure the ice duct tray on the bottom of the ice maker is lowered down, then insert the cooling loop through the rear of the ice maker. Next, push the ice maker to the rear until the top locking tab snaps into place. Next, push up on the lower ice duct tray until it snaps into place, then reinstall the Phillips screw. Next, install the ice maker plug, then tuck the wires into the side. Next, reinstall the wire housing cover by pushing it on the side and sliding it towards the rear. Then, reinstall the Phillips screw. Next, reinstall the ice bucket by pushing it until it locks into place. With everything put back together, you wanna to plug the refrigerator back in and test everything out to make sure it's working properly. You wanna make sure that you give the ice maker some time to cool back down and start making ice. This can take around six to 12 hours. 
If you need any parts for your repair, check out our website, partsdoctor.com. We'll leave a link in the description below. So that's it for this repair. If you have any tips or tricks of your own, let us know in the comments.